Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today's episode number 122. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. If you were to ask any Brit, what's your opinion on Ribena? Most of the time they will go, it's fucking amazing. Because it, it's one of those drinks that we absolutely fucking love. Ribena. Awesome. The best of you. Ooh, come on. It is pretty much the same thing, yeah. It's just, um... One is sort of really thick and sugary, and is almost like a syrup, which is the saft. Uh, and squash is sort of a little... Even though it's got sugar, it's sort of more dissolved into, like, a water rather than a syrup. To the basement. Many surprises await you. I have to do it. <laughs> it's such a tune. I don't care if it slowed me down. It was a good tune. Do, 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 do. You hear the last time you know we're gonna find you. So get in the car seat because you're not up to going. And she spoke words that would melt in your hands. If it was COVID, I would feel worse. What do you mean by that? Did I miss a message beforehand, Hans? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong chat. I mean, I'm I'm interested in this conversation, so you can you can carry on here as well. <laughs> Most of our ones are zero, but the sugary versions are syrupy. Yeah, so those zero ones are probably more like what our squash is. <laughs> Betraying you with different streamer at the same time. <laughs> oh no! Are you cheating on me, you bastard? <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Ba doo do 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 That's only six o'clock. I might actually finish streaming in about half an hour at this rate. So I'll be really, really early actually. I sort of planned to do my morning stuff at up until about 4. Start streaming at 4, even though I messed that up and ended up starting streaming at half 4. Because I had other stuff I had to do beforehand. I just didn't plan it right. Um, and then finish streaming at 8. Edit till about 11 and then do some coursework till about 12. <laughs> I have 10 monitor, I'm cheating you with the 10x. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fair enough. Do, 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 do. Hmm. I'm basically doing this um, programming course to try and get back into Python again. Um, partly so it helps with job searching and stuff like that. Because having, like, I have the programming knowledge, but I don't have Python 3 knowledge. I've got Python 2 knowledge. Um, and some of the stuff is actually a little bit different 
from Python 2 to Python 3. And most of my Python 2 knowledge is sort of like so far in the back of my brain, I can't access it. <laughs> so. I have three. God. See, me personally, I don't think I'd ever need more than two monitors. I think having one monitor with a computer is a bit um, of a pain in the ass. But like more than two monitors, I haven't found a use for more than two. Like I've used two monitors on a regular and I think two monitors is like the sweet spot. He is becoming Discord mod. <laughs> yeah, like, you almost never use the third one. Like, if I was to have a third monitor, it would be a television that would literally be only, like, it, it would be a third monitor that's plugged into my PC, but it would never be on. And if it was on, these two monitors would be off, because I'd be using my PC in bed playing video games and whatnot. So, like that would be the only use case for me actually buying a third monitor. But, actually my stand on this monitor is kind of giving out. So I think, I'm wanting at some point to get a, um, This will be some point, like, well in the future. Like, in six months' time, maybe. To get a bigger main monitor. Get rid of this thing. Even though it's done me well. This thing's, like, six, seven years old now. It's getting old. Get rid of this one. Put this on this monitor arm. Because this stand is dead. And get a new main monitor. And then I'll have colour accurate stuff when I'm looking at my Twitch stream. Because it, it's so strange. Me looking at this, which is a very accurate, very nice looking colour. And then go into this, where all the colours are washed out. Yeah. Your best bet, Cotto, you actually don't need desk space to have a monitor. Like, I've got my monitor. It's been held up on the side of the desk. Um, because technically, now, because I've got a smaller desk, because I'm moving, I don't... If I had, like, the monitor on the stand still, I wouldn't have the desk space. Now, even though my old one, I could have had them on the stands, I wanted it there. Yeah, the stand's tiny. What do you mean? What do you mean when I get the room for a monitor, but you're not talking about desk space? Like, you don't need the room. What you need for a monitor is desk space. Yeah, the monitor arm is tiny. That's the thing, because it's held at like a small point, and the arm is in the air. So unless you've got things going over your desk, it shouldn't be affected. How do you not have space behind your desk? The arm wouldn't go behind your desk. It would be on top above the desk. Like, here. It's on top but above the desk, but there's still all this space under here, below the monitor, that is still useful for, like, a keyboard or a mouse. You know, space that... I don't get what you mean. That makes no sense. Yeah. That's like right on the edge of the desk. This doesn't go anywhere beyond this point on the edge of the desk. I don't think you realize what like an actual, like I think you're thinking of one of these stands 
in which case, yes, you wouldn't have Rue. Yet yeah, the clip is like... If you can't move a desk five millimetres to make room for that, like five millimetres forward, you need a bigger room. <laughs> like, I've seen your room, you have space. Is the point I'm making. You have plenty of space. Like, the monitor arm that I use takes up so little space. Um, but... It feels like, um, what's it called? The desk is actually bigger. Because it's, it's managing to hold two monitors and a TV. Yet, I still have all this desk space beneath it. Because it literally takes up, like, the size of a bank card on my desk. That's it. Yeah, but, like, if you think about it, that free spot that has space for a controller, that is plenty enough for an extra monitor. So my point is, you can't really say you don't have space for a monitor when you've got, like, con you can have space for your controllers, your keyboards and all that. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, the excuse of I don't have space for a monitor arm is just bullshit. It's just chatting out of your ass. You definitely have space, you just can't be asked to get a monitor arm. Like, I would write... Quite happily, I'm tempted to get the same monitor arm I've got for this one. Get the same one for my main monitor. Just so I can get rid of the stand. Because then I'd have actually more root space on my desk. Also, what's up, Shadow? How are you today? Sorry, I'm ranting. <laughs> yes, Mech is big nerd. You are very much correct. And Mech is very good. Okay, what is up? Welcome. How are you today? But yeah. Mmm. Miguelo. Very good track. My favourite track. Yeah, and walls as well. You can hang monitors off walls if you really don't have the desk space. Like, I could, I could quite easily create or create more desk space if I used a monitor arm instead of this. Because I would make more space. Because then the monitors, they'd be in my face where I want them. But the only difference is that um, they're being held up at the back of the desk where stuff normally isn't. Where I don't normally put stuff. So that frees up all this space in front of me. Why a lot of businesses use monitors on monitor arms? Because it gives them more space on the desk, more space to work. Uh, my monitors are both 24 inches, so... They're pretty much the average size for monitors. You can get... There's basically three sizes for, like, normal monitors. Until you get into, like, ultra-wides, and that's 24 inch, 27, and 32. Most monitors that are bigger than that technically aren't monitors, they're computers. Uh, not computers, um, televisions. They're not really classed as monitors. Technically, this is a television, so. Um, yeah, but you'd need two arms. One for each monitor. Like, any arm can do. You just gotta make sure it can hold up the weight of whatever you're using. This is holding... I mean, I've had this monitor arm for a good year, and it feels brand new, pretty much. Right, it's done a great job. But you can also buy monitor arms that have one attachment point 
but you can fit two or three monitors on, which makes it even smaller the amount of space that you would need to fit stuff on. So again, proving my point, the excuse of I don't have space for a second monitor is bullshit. It is a bullshit excuse. Give, give in. Yeah, OBS is taking more CPU than it used to, and I've got no clue why. Uh, I can't really say. I've never tried to play seat cockpit, so... I've never driven in a sim racing cockpit, really. So, I can't really say. Can't give an opinion. I will say play seat ones look cool. Like, you can get, like, Forza ones, dirt ones. They do look quite cool. But just because it looks cool doesn't mean it is cool. So. Ah, you bastard. You bastard. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Yeah, get on the brakes, you prick. You fat bastard! You fat bastard! You fat bastard! <laughs> Makes me want to give in! Well, I'm gonna have fun tonight. I've got 10 videos to edit. And then 8 to sort out with thumbnails. Race finished, it's B1! And Zeno is the Interlagos Grand Prix champion. <laughs> Not bad, well done Zeno. Good one. This is the sole reason why I don't 1v1 Zeno. Because <laughs> I know he's going to whoop my ass. Yeah, get on those brakes, you prick. It meant faster than my qualifying time by a second. To be fair, you only did one qualifying lap. So... You kind of didn't do a great job of your qualifying. Because <laughs> you're supposed to keep doing it to get the best qualifying time. But yeah, not bad, man. Behind us in the dust. Is there we could come? Oh yeah, I forgot Gran Turismo simulates like fuel weight. They simulate fuel weight and tire wear. But that's about it. <laughs> don't hold me up now. I can stand my own ground. I don't need your help now. You won't let me down, 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 down. Boom, 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 boom,
but it must have been 121k for a 51 minute drive. That's kind of ridiculous. That's also another reason why I just refuse to play Gran Turismo, because the thing is, 121k wouldn't be that bad if you were playing something like Forza. Actually, no, that still would be quite bad. Like, mathematically speaking, you should be able to earn a car within an hour of trying to go for it. Maybe two, maybe three hours. And for those really rare ones, five hours. Six hours. A little bit of extra grinding. You should not have to literally, for an entire day, non-stop, be grinding really powerful races just to get something like a McLaren F1. Like, the actual economy of the game is completely screwed. And the only kind of people that can actually afford the cars are people like Super GT. Because you think Super GT literally plays Gran Turismo Sport non-stop. It's literally one of the few games he plays. Like, he plays that an insane amount. And he only just is able to afford some of those cars. So you think how bad that game is sort of made for the average player. It's the one reason I'm, like, I'm really hating Gran Turismo 7. Because it's just aimed at... It's aimed at fans of the game, definitely. But these are the fans that play the game at a metric fuck ton. So fans of the game who maybe play other games, you know, get screwed over. But yeah, when you think you've got 10.9 million, you wouldn't even be able to buy the McLaren F1 if that came in the store. And you're someone who plays Gran Turismo 7 a metric fuck ton. Like, it's stupid. It should not be like that. At least you can now sell cars, which I think is a bonus. But it's still stupid. I'd even go as far to say, you know how games like Cyberpunk, a year after it came out, it was like, oh, this is the state of the game that the game should have been when it released. It's a little bit similar to Battlefield, even though Battlefield's actually pretty shit, just in general. But people are saying Battlefield 2042 is very much similar to what they would expect it to have been like day one. I can't even say that with Gran Turismo 7. I really don't think it was even ready for release in the state that it is now. As a game. I don't think it was read Gran Turismo 7 is ready for release. The game's been out for nearly a year. It has till... Um, what's it called? It has until February next year to become good... Otherwise, it literally is like an utterly shit game. And it wasn't just a case of, oh, it needed an extra year. It would just be a shit game. In my eyes. Yeah, so 25 mil. I mean, the amount of time you need to play for 25 mil, I think, is uh, about 24 hours. And to think, if you're then wanting to just fast track that and do that with microtransactions you're paying more than minimum wage per hour to do that yeah I bet Zeno it's always fun to just drive the problem I have is that I don't like competitive environments so if I'm trying to race somebody eh, I'm not a fan of it Gran Turismo, though, I'm a fan of it. Because Gran Turismo, everyone seems to understand, like, don't be a dick. 
when it comes to driving. Every other racing game, everyone's just a dick, so. I think they should do, for Gran Turismo Sport races, they should do license tests. Where you have to do some tests. You have to drive against, like, AI cars. You're not allowed to collide with them. If it takes an hour to do the test, it takes an hour. But you should have to do the tests, not just watch a video. And sort of do enough of the races to unlock it. I think there should genuinely be, like, a license test for online racing in Gran Turismo. Obviously, lobby racing is a different thing. I think lobbies are just lobbies. But, like, for actual sport racing... Yeah, driving license score is, is a good thing when it comes to, like, doing the offline stuff. It's a good tutorial. gets you into driving. But what it doesn't teach you is how to drive in online races. Driving etiquette and stuff like that. That needs to be reiterated and people need to actually do these licenses and get them right and be put in that practical experience of doing it. Not just being shown a video and told, oh, if you're about to crash in someone, try and swerve out the way and crash yourself out first. Because everyone listens to that and is like, fuck no, I'm not crashing myself out. Even though that is driving etiquette, you don't ruin someone else's race, only ruin your own. But people will listen to that and be like, that's stupid. And just ignore it and just fucking... Pew. Two now so I can sell it for the money I should have gotten. Hey, nice one. Yeah, so... That's... That's one of the things I don't like about... Like, Gran Turismo is... It, it is a bit of a shit show. I'm sort of half hoping that... Polyphony have, have given up on the game. I know it sounds harsh. But I really hope Gran Turismo 7, they've sort of given up on it. Done it as almost like a test. And they can move on to Gran Turismo 8 and make that for the PS5. Exclusive for the PS5. Make it like the old school Gran Turismos. Properly. I don't, I don't get how they could advertise, say, oh, we're going back to the map screen that we had on um, the old Gran Turismo's, but then proceed to add in what is quite possibly the worst way of doing events that any video game has ever done. Like, I kid you not, the way that they structured the events... And how they've done them, and how they've named them, and how they've ordered them is terrible in Gran Turismo 7. Two hundred and twenty-eight k sell price for an old school F1 car. Yeah, that's that would be another problem for me then. If you're selling a car that is a rare car, should not be that fucking cheap. But yeah, not enough for a single McLaren F1. I mean, the fact that there are cars, I know realistically, in a modern climate, because I, I believe the credit system in Gran Turismo, they have two credit systems. I think they have one that is familiar with Japanese, so you end up spending like 2.4 million on a like a Ford Mustang, but like that's very much closer to yen. And they've also got a system that's close to the US dollar. So granted, I know cars like I have no problem with the prices of the cars. Except for some of them. Some of them are ridiculous, like the McLaren F1. But... The thing is, the... Cars should be cheaper... In Gran Turismo... The, the thing is, there needs to be balance. Compared to earnings and how much stuff costs. Right? You think, in the UK, just in general... 
like, without getting too political, the cost of living crisis is partly, like, to blame because of the fact that people don't have enough money for how much stuff costs. That sort of thing can be applied to video games. If people aren't earning enough in-game credits for stuff and they're having to basically play a game for 12 hours to earn enough credit, it's a similar kind of thing. You know, but just in the circumstance of a video game. And the fact that mathematically, I think it was like £168, you would have to earn, like spend £168 on microtransactions to be able to get yourself that McLaren. Which, if you then work out how much people earn on an hourly wage, um, would be fairly similar to an hourly wage every hour. So you would be either, you know, it's just ridiculous. For one car in a game, because the developers just really did not think and balance the game out. And I, I would not be surprised if Gran Turismo 7 did not go through any gameplay testing. Like, I would not be surprised if they just had absolutely no testing whatsoever. Like, they just said, okay, the game seems to work in races, that's fine. We'll send it out. Which, I mean, races and stuff like that is like when 95% of bugs happen anyways. So, menu bugs are fairly difficult to make. But I genuinely don't think anyone just sat down from start to finish, played Gran Turismo 7. Because if they did, like, they'd realise, one, giving you shit cars every so often, that you don't even have the incentive to use because there's no events that require them, is a bad idea. And they would also notice that, actually, it's really fucking difficult to get some of these cars in this game. It takes too long. You know, if the, if the Japanese developers sat and did a shift at work to try and earn one of these cars in their testing, they wouldn't even be able to earn it in a shift. They'd start on Monday, and in the middle of Thursday's shift would they actually get close to buying that McLaren. Like, that's how ridiculous it is. Oh my god. You can anti-lag a 650S. That's mental. TTA Online be like, you'll buy a shark card, you'll buy an upgrade a car, you get back to zero. Yeah, it's it's silly. Like my drive-in. Woohoo. I butchered that one. <laughs> to be fair, though, I thought that was the last lap, so... Oops. I do think all cars should have anti-lag. I don't know why, just being able to, like, force the cars to spool their turbos and just hear, like... Like, anti-lag is just the coolest thing in the world and it should be mandatory on cars. Fuck the governments and their noise restrictions. I want a car to go bang, bang, bang as you're driving it along. <laughs> Nailed the 720 degrees. When are you playing ETS 2 again? Uh, not today. Uh, maybe on Tuesday. I might do. I'm not sure. Yeah, who cares about engine lifespan? I just want fucking anti-lag. <laughs> Fuck the lifespan. I want the car to blow up in my face. Bang! <laughs> I just want to hear the bum, 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 out of the exhaust. <laughs> That's all I want to hear. Such a good noise. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.